And excuse me that I sound like a man, because I'm getting over being uh, sick. And yesterday, I mean, I had like no voice. And I was like, Lord, you got to give me a voice. At least enough to tell your people what you have to say. Yes. Hallelujah. And that song that Nia was singing in the beginning, that you went back and read the lyrics, I had typed them up and she was singing them. Amen. And I was like, this is what I've come to talk to you about today. Right. And what the lyrics said in the beginning, he, they were saying, come all who are thirsty. Yes. Yes. Come all who are weary. Yes. Come. He was giving an invitation Hallelujah. to his people to come. Yes. And then it said, the power of hell. <laughs> hey. <laughs> forever defeated. Yes. Now it is well. I am walking. I'm walking in freedom. Hallelujah. Okay, and you might not see it right this moment. Maybe you don't feel free, but the cross of Jesus Christ says that you are free. Yes. And the power of hell, whether you feel like it right now or not, is forever defeated. Yes. If you read the end of the book, we win. Yes. We win. We're winners now. Yes. And, and we're winners then. You just got to hold on. Yes. I've just got to hold on. And then it says, bring all your failures, yes. bring your addictions, lay them. Hey, what you mean? I don't have to have it all together? Come on. Glory, glory. <laughs> <laughs> that we don't have to have it all together. Bring your failures. So this verse it says, come. And I want to declare over you that the power of hell is already defeated. Yes. All right? So you can come because the power of that thing's already broken. Yes. And then I want, I need you to do something though. In a relationship with me, I need you to lay it down. Yes. Lay down your failures. Lay down your addictions. Lay, lay down your burdens. Lay down those things that are heavy and weighing you down. Lay down the cares of this world. Look, it doesn't have to be outward sin. We could just be like, like, Addictions, okay, that we can see and manifest outwardly. It could be just you're carrying the weight of the world on your shoulders and you're trying to figure it all out. Look, we were driving in the car yesterday. I'm gonna share it a little bit, Daniel. That's fine. And we're sitting there. Look, don't hang out with a preacher. <laughs> you don't want your business told on stage. Come on, yeah. sister. And so we're sitting there and we're just traveling through some things in our conversation. And we just, I've been going through some stuff, Danielle's been going through some stuff, Nia's been going through some stuff, and we're in the car driving back from Charity Gale, and we're sitting there talking about all these different things, and Danielle begins to weep, and Nia was like, Danielle, roll down that window. <laughs> yeah. So she rolls down her window, and she goes, that is not for you to carry. I want you to throw that yeah. out the window. Hallelujah. And literally, Danielle's going like this, right? <laughs> Can you imagine? Yeah. Takes the foolish things to yes. keep down the line. So she's, wrong. she's throwing imaginary stuff, it looks like, out the window, right? And I said, hold on. I want some yeah. of that. Yeah. What a, and then I called my friend Hillary. She, I said, girl, I want you to get in your car. <laughs> and I went, she's laughing. I said, I want you to roll down your window. And I want you to start throwing stuff. Oh, yeah, and yeah. look, she videoed it. Then yeah. she gets in her car. And look, now y'all after church. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody drive out with their yeah. windows down. And start throwing it out the window. Because Jesus never intended you to carry yeah. that burden. Yeah. He died for you to carry that burden. Yes. Uh, that's just for free. Yeah. If y'all will turn with me to the book of John, the book of John, chapter 8, verse 36. By the way, I miss y'all. Yeah. It's been like forever. <laughs> the title of my message this morning is Freedom Reigns. Yeah. Freedom Reigns. That word reign means a time in which a sovereign will rule 
and govern, having dominion, power, and authority. Oh, and I want to ask you this morning, and this is just as much for me as it is for you. Who's reigning? Who is reigning? And I don't just mean I'm saved. I'm a Christian. I'm not just meaning that one time that I gave my heart to the Lord. Every day, in every circumstance, in the way we open up our mouth, in the way that we think about other believers, mm. in the way that we conduct ourselves, in our lifestyles, in our homes, in our families, in our businesses, who is reigning? Mm. Who has supreme authority, power, and dominion over our lives? And I think, and we're going to look at it in the scripture, that sometimes we think we're letting the Lord reign. And Pastor Matt hit on this a little bit. But we're not. Mm. Mm. It's good. And the Lord has been showing me, Angela, that's not me. Mm. That's reigning in that area. That attitude that you got. Yes, <laughs> Hello. <laughs> You need to, we need to taper that. Yes. And that's not, the Lord isn't doing it because he's mad at me. He's doing it so I could be filled with more of him. Yes. They said this at the Charity Gale concert and I really liked it. He said, her husband said, I'm not trying to look like Pastor Matt. And Pastor Matt isn't trying to look like Naya. And Naya's not trying to look like my dad. But we're all trying to look like Jesus. Yes. Yes. And the more we look like Jesus mm. and strive to look like Jesus, the more we look like each other. Right. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because right. we're starting to look like Jesus. Right. And the more we can function better amongst each other, because we're all wanting to be more like Jesus. That's so good. But when we're yeah. all wanting to be like Maybe even someone else, like, I want to be like this. Or, no, just want to be like Jesus. Yes. And then there won't be so much division. Yes. And strife. Yes. We don't, the Lord isn't pleased with that. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, good. so the word of God says this, John 8, 36. If the Son, Jesus, therefore shall make you free. Hear me today. He wants to liberate, deliver, that you would be unrestrained. You would no longer be a slave. You would be completely exempt. You shall be free indeed. That word indeed is a state of being. This is how I live my life in freedom. Yes. This is how I conduct my behavior in freedom. This is where I want to dwell. This is where I want to live. This is where I want to remain. Because I'll tell you, as a believer, it is not easy. Every day you wake up, you, the, <coughs> hell itself is waging war against you, yeah. yes, yes. against your soul, against your mind, against your family, against your children, against your finances, against your health, against your emotional state, against your soul. He is waging war against your faith. Because if he can take your faith, if the enemy can take your faith, then he can take you down. Mm. But Jesus always wanted for you to operate in the realm of faith and freedom. Mm. Faith and freedom. He died for you to operate in the realm of faith and freedom. And sometimes, and he's, the enemy's a master of deception. That's right. And our own emotions are like... <laughs> I don't know about you, but mine are. <laughs> yeah. And we're on a roller coaster of emotion, and emotion, the deception plays on the emotion, and then when you're in that emotional state, you feel like that's your truth. Mm. That's so good. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's like, then we start living in that. Yeah. Mm. Lord help us. And Jesus is saying, <laughs> I've 
died to give you so much more. I died to give you joy. I died to give you peace. I died to set you free from that depression. I died to set you free from that tormenting state continuously. I died to set you free from that grief and that pain and that sorrow. I died to set you free from that jealousy and that envy. I died to set you free from self-righteousness and pride and your own agendas and your own plans. I died to set you free from that anger and that that hate and the malice and the bitterness. I died to set you free from lust. Yes. I've died to set you free from covetousness. Yes. I've died to set you free from those things. Yes. I died to set you free from the hold that the world has on you. Yes. I've died to set you free from those things. And I want you to walk in the realm of faith and freedom. Mm. So who's reigning? See, because when those things come up in our heart, we have a choice at that time, right at that moment. Okay, there's that jealousy. Oh, Naya was singing good on that piano today. Oh, jealousy come up. I wish I could do that. I said, now she put me behind that piano. <laughs> <laughs> Not me. <laughs> and oh, there it is. What are we going to do with it? God, I give that to you. I, I, I lay that down to you. Yes. But I'm operating in faith and freedom. Because you know what, Lord? If you wanted me to have it, I'd have it. Right. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? Right. Oh, there's that lie. I, I, somebody comes and confronts you with something, you back up for me, I'm going to lie. And all of a sudden there's that lie. Oh, no, I'm going to lay that down, Lord. I'm going to be honest today. Come on. I'm going to be honest today because you know what? I want people to know that I'm a woman of honesty and integrity. Yeah. And when I can walk in honesty and integrity and truth, then I can walk in freedom. Yeah. Because you know what? Lies, bitter, all that will have a hold on That's your heart. Right. That's right. Callousness. He said, I love that, Pastor Matt. Apply the oil to the callousness of my heart. If you have already been going in that direction, let the oil of the Holy yes. Ghost yes. be applied to your heart. Let your heart become soft again yes. because he wants you to operate in freedom. Listen, if we mess up, we're not too far gone that Jesus isn't there to pick us back up. Come on, yeah. Okay? Maybe we in a hole. Come on up out the hole. <laughs> Come on up out the hole. Okay? Because he rose from his tomb. Yeah. Yes. And he wants to cause us to get on up out of our tomb. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm going to tell you this. God's mission and redemption plan has always been for his people to operate in the realm of faith and freedom. Freedom from what? Bondage. Right. A Christian can be bound. Yes, right. Freedom from sin. Freedom from demonic influence upon our life. I like this. Freedom from a disabling spirit. We're going to talk about it a little later, but the spirit of infirmity means disable, disabling. That's the job of the enemy to try to disable your faith. That's right. You get what I'm saying? Try to disable you from moving forward. He wants to put limits on your movement to make you ineffective or inoperative. That you can't operate in what God has called you to operate in. He wants to disable that because he knows if he can shut that down, that the people which you are called to be a light to won't get it. Mm. So if he can stop you, <laughs> but that song said, the power of hell is forever defeated, and it is well, I'm going to walk in freedom. Yes. Yes. I'm not walking in that disabling spirit any longer. That's right. That anxiety that has kept you bound in bed, Come on. Mm. that depression that has run rampant in your mind, that has sowed lies in your mind for years. Yeah. Jesus is about to straighten that out this morning. Yeah. I believe that. As I was going through this, I said, Lord, this is so good. Yeah. <laughs> I love the word of God. Because yeah. the word of God brings life and health and strength to your spirit. So the setting of this story looks like this. And when I, when I went to the setting, I was like, oh, Lord, this took a little turn. <laughs> I want to say this, Matthew 6, 24, if you put that up, Sandy. 
Matthew 6, 24, and then I'm going to go back to John 8. Matthew 6, 24. You cannot serve two masters. No man can serve two masters. For either he will hate. That word hate means detest or love less. He will hate the one and love the other. Listen to this, what this word love means. It meant to dote over or to breathe after. What are we breathing mm. after? You can't love both. <laughs> you can't breathe after one and then breathe after the other. You can't dote after one and then dote after the other. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. So what he's saying is that you can't serve the world, your flesh, and the Lord. You can't serve. You're going to either detest the one and love the other. So I want to ask us today, and I have to ask myself, Lord, what am I chasing after? Am I chasing after your kingdom? Am I chasing after your glory? Am I chasing after your righteousness? Not what we think is righteous. Come on. Mm. That's so good. Look, the Lord's been growing me in this. <laughs> He's got my back up against the wall. He's yeah. calling, causing me yeah. some growing pains. Oh, and growing doesn't always feel good. But who am I serving? Yeah. Because you're not where you think you should be, or what we think we should be doing, Come on. or how we think it should look. Or wh whatever the case may be. Who are we? God's in control. He's absolutely sovereign. That's right. He knows what's going on in your life. Mm -hmm. Don't think he, did, he passed you by. He didn't pass us by. So he's asking us, who, who are we going to serve? You cannot serve God and mammon. You cannot. That's the word of God, y'all. If y'all want to argue with it, you argue with that. Mm -hmm. We cannot serve one or we have to pick who you're going to serve instead. So listen, so why do I start with that? Because John 8, 31 says this. Then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him. So what they do? Believe. Believed on him. So these were believers, right? If you continue in my word, uh-oh, then you are my disciples. Jesus is setting a precedent before he says, whom the son sets free is free indeed. He said, if you are my disciples, what does he say we need to do? Continue in his word. There's a contingency plan. Yes. <laughs> you got to continue in his word. Mm. We don't, and he is the word. Yes. And we don't just get saved and do whatever we want to do. We don't get to read through the book and pick and choose. Well, this looks good. That doesn't look good. This looks good. That doesn't look good. And if you don't understand it, well, guess what? It's not for us to understand everything that the Lord did. His ways are higher than our ways. His thoughts are higher than our thoughts. Amen. We might not understand it, but he's good. He's righteous. He's holy. He's merciful. He's forgiving. So he's all these things. He's powerful. So he's all these things. So we just trust his character. God, you understand. So he's talking to his disciples, his learners, his pupils. And that means continual learner. Continue in my word. That shows action, shows relationship. That word continue means, listen, I will stay, abide, dwell, endure through hardships. I will be present and remain in his word. Amen. That don't mean just read it. That means obey it. Hear what I'm saying to you today. It's not just reading the Bible. In is the framework of how we walk in his word. Are we walking in his word? Do you hear what I'm saying? Are we walking according to what the word of God says? Because when we walk in truth, the truth shall make us free yeah. continuously. But if we're walking in a lie, then we're going to get more bound and more bound. 
and more about. John 8.32 says this, you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. That word know means I am resolved in my heart. Mm. It's without question. Right, right. I'm not going to be moved. Peter said, where will I go, Lord? Right. Who has the words of life? Where else is there to run? How many times have we been going through something and we're like, I'm out of here. Oh, yeah. I'm out of this church. These people are crazy. <laughs> I'm out of this place. I'm out of here. And my sugar's smiling at me. <laughs> I'm out of here. And, but this says, you shall know, you shall be fully determined in your heart. I am cleared up from any skepticism. <clears throat> I am sure. No, wow. Right? That word is, listen, I'm a word person. <laughs> so is Pastor Matt. To know, I am fully resolved that this is it. Yeah. I am determined that I'm going this direction. I am cleared up from any skepticism that Jesus' word is the truth, yes, yes. the way and the life. Hallelujah. And this is the only way for me and my house. Hallelujah. Yes. Amen. You know what I'm saying? Yes. And I am sure that Jesus is who he said he is mm -hmm. and what he has done. And that shall make me free. Amen. Yes. That, see, if you go back and forth in your heart or in your mind, then you're not walking in freedom. That's right, right. We're walking in confusion. That's right. And the enemy is the master of confusion. Free means to liberate, deliver. God bless you. Unrestrained, not a slave. Clearing of all vindication. John 8.33 says this. Me and Danielle were talking about this yesterday. I need you to hear this because we're the body of Christ. They answered him and it says... So his disciples are answering Jesus and said, we be Abraham's seed. We're never in bondage to any man. <laughs> Did you just preach this? Yeah, <laughs> Praise God. How sayest thou? You should be made free. Wait, I wrote down, they were in bondage to the Egyptians, the Assyrians, the Babylonians, the Persians, the Greeks, and now the Romans. And they're saying, but we're the seed of Abraham. And Jesus is like, no, it doesn't matter what line you came from. You still need to believe in me. It doesn't matter if you go to Jimmy Swagger Church or you go to Crossway Ministry or wherever you go. It doesn't matter the line and the lineage that you come from. You need to come from Jesus. Yes. We need to be born again. He was talking to Jews that believed. So he was hitting them up. And they're like, well, we're, we're from Abraham's. <laughs> How many people? We're from, well, let me not do that. <laughs> but, so we're from this, we're from that. We've done this. Mm. Now I could be like, well, I went to Guatemala in Ireland. <laughs> Sorry, not, I just, you're my best friend. I could pick on you. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? Have you not seen what I have done? Mm. Come on, sister. He said, if you continue in my word. Mm. Wow. <clears throat> he don't care. No, he cares, but he don't care about all the things that we've done. Right. He cares, are we continuing? Yes. Yes. Are we continuing after the truth? Yes. Are we continuing? Look, the word of God says, let me say this. John 14, 17. Even the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it sees him not, neither knows him, but you know him, for he dwells in you and, excuse me, dwells with you and shall be in you. So the spirit of truth, whom the world does not know, why? Because it's of a different spirit. The spirit of this world, let me give you a little tidbit. I went on a cruise. 
And I was standing there. And I, th I thought to myself, Pastor Matt, this world is not my home. Amen. Yeah, yeah. You know, I, I enjoyed the views. I enjoyed the dolphins. I enjoyed the water. But the whole atmosphere of the cruise mm -hmm. was the world. Right, right. And I was just like, my spirit don't bear witness to this. Like, I wish I could jump off the boat and swim back. <laughs> I would have been real fit if I did. But you begin as the closer you go after the Lord and the more you walk in freedom with him, the more you begin to see, this is not what I want. This is, I don't even want to be near it. Come on. It like makes you feel dirty. <laughs> like it may, starts making you feel like you gotta go take a shower. <laughs> like I went back to my room each night, like shut out of go shut up. <laughs> Wash over me, oh God. <laughs> because this is a hot mess. <laughs> and Lord, I love your creation. But we take it and the world twists it yes. right. and makes it into what they want it to make it seem like they got to have a good time that way. And I just realized more and more, I'm a walk in freedom yeah. <laughs> from all of yes. this. Yes. <laughs> because that this is not my home. Right. And I'm just a pilgrim passing through. Right. Yes. And I just want to be a light to the broken Amen. And I, I just want to be there for people that need to be loved on and cared for. And I just, God just used me in the midst of this yeah. dark yeah. world. Yeah. But look, their spirit don't bear witness to our spirit. And it says, cannot receive. So the world can't receive the spirit of truth. So you wonder why you're going around witnessing and people are getting angry. <laughs> Or you going around and, and people, there's an agitation. That's because they don't know how to receive the truth. It's, it says it in the word right here. Because they see it, they see it not, they can't see, they can't discern. But you know him. For he dwells, remains, continues. He stays in one place. The Holy Spirit don't like, you. it's not like Pastor Matt messes up and the Holy Spirit goes, whoop. That's right. I used to believe that, y'all. <laughs> I used to believe when I messed up, I had to like get saved all over again. And then the Holy Spirit would like come back. <laughs> he don't like leave and come back and leave and come back. He stays. <clears throat> he remains. Mm -hmm. He works with you. Amen. He shows you truth. Yeah. He reveals it. Yeah. He takes it away. Yeah. He shows you truth. Yeah. He reveals all it. Hallelujah. He takes it away. He brings you further. Oh, then we go this you. way. <laughs> Because we're, she we're sheep. Yeah. I told my Sunday school class at the church, I'm at, I said, we stupid sheep. Yeah, 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 yeah. They're like, are you calling me stupid? <laughs> I'm like, yes. <laughs> because we are. Yeah. We're prone to wander. Yes. We're like, ooh. <laughs> and we go over here. And the shepherd's like, no. <laughs> mm. Come back over here. Yeah. Come back into the flock. Come back into the fold. Mm. Come back into yeah. the truth. He takes his staff, yeah. brings us home back. Can you see it? Yeah. Can you see it? And then, look, sometimes the shepherd, I think, and I've read this before in how shepherds deal with their sheep. I believe he broke the sheep's leg yeah. Yeah. at one point. You feel broken and battered and like, oh my gosh, Lord, what? Maybe he's got to break that leg to get you yeah. 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 where he wants you to be. Mm. Well, that's good. Jesus. Oh, it wouldn't come to that. <laughs> but you know what? We are stupid sheep. Yes. We're going to go in that direction. And that's, and, but the Lord's always going to bring us back. Mm -hmm. I want to say this. Off of what they said about where Abraham seed. For if a man thinketh himself to be something, when he is nothing, he deceives himself. Right. Galatians 6.3. He said, they, they said, we're of the line of Abraham. We've never been in bondage. <laughs> if you think you're something, but well, we're nothing, we're already deceived. Oh, yeah. Lord, That's right, man. If we think we have no sin, mm -hmm. 
-hmm. we're already deceived. Yeah. 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 Because said, he said, you ain't going to be complete until the day of my coming. Mm -hmm. Come on. So that means we got work that needs to be done in our lives. That word deceive, listen to this, means to be a mind misleader. He's misleading your mind. Mm -hmm. That's good. To persuade you to be disobedient and disloyal. Mm -hmm. yep. Our own emotions, our own mindset, our own flesh. Yeah. The enemy will mislead our thinking to get us to be disloyal and disobedient to the word of God. Mm. Well, that's why it's so important to know the word. That's right. It's good. To know what the word says. <clears throat> John 8, 34 says this, Jesus answered them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, whoever committeth sin is a servant of sin. Mm. This is deep, y'all. I'm talking about walking in freedom. But he had to he had to let them know before he started teaching them how to walk in freedom yes. that you weren't gonna get free from being of Abraham's line. That's right. You weren't going to get free any other way Come on. but by me. That's it. But That's through it. me. And he said, Whoever committed sin is a servant of sin. And he said, Verily, verily, listen up, church. Listen to me. That it's an imperative statement. He's saying, this is important. I can hear Jesus just calling out. Verily, verily, church, wake up. That whoever committed sin, that means makes their journey to a state of being dedicated to this way. Mm -hmm. Let me say that again. Yes. You're making, I'm making my journey to be dedicated to this way of sin. Mm. It's not, I just messed up and repented and I am committing to it. Mm. Yeah. You know, when you make a commitment to something, it, there's an initial commitment and then there's a continual right. commitment. Right, right. And sometimes we falter, we fail, we got weaknesses and frailties and Jesus knew that that's why he died. He died to shed his blood so we could be washed and cleansed and forgiven and changed continuously. But there's an initial commitment to our relationship with the Lord and then a continual commitment to our relationship with the Lord. But we can do that in the other direction. Right. We can commit sin. Right. And have you ever committed sin and been like, well, yeah. might as well just keep going. I'm there now. And the, and the more you go that way, the easier it becomes. That's right. The more you don't forgive, the harder your heart becomes. Come on. And yeah. the easier it becomes yes. to hate. Now, you're, now you hate. Wow. Now you walk in the church and hate. Mm. Mm. Now there's hate in your heart. Or I lied. And you know the snowball effect with lies. And you continually lie. Or I've cheated, and I'm now continually cheating. Mm -hmm. Or whatever the case may be. And I now I've committed to that. But it says, when you commit to it, you become a servant of it. You become in the bondage, whether it's voluntary or involuntary. Mm -hmm. So you can willfully say, I'm going to go in that direction. I'm not listening to the Lord. This is a bunch of... Help us. Whatever Pastor Matt's speaking, I, that's not for me. That's just too much. Huh? Pastor Matt is too much. <laughs> <laughs> I love Pastor Matt. Amen. Amen. Absolutely. Yes. I'd sit under you forever if I had. Yes. Amen. Amen. Because the truth is spoken here. That's right. right. Yeah. But, because, but because maybe we don't understand something, we could be like, oh, that is just too much. He's just too here. I'm just going to tote this line. But you know what? When we commit to not walk, and listen, what he says, go ask the Lord for yourself. I'm not saying just listen to Pastor. That's right. That's right. I'm saying when he says something and maybe you don't understand it, go back and ask the Lord because he's the spirit of truth. 
Yes. And he will reveal what? All truth. Yes. And he will cause you to walk in what? All truth. Yes. And he will lead you in the way of freedom. Right? Yep. But sometimes you got to let go of something to get free. Come on. Come on. Maybe we've been thinking the wrong way about the Bible. Yeah, that's right. Come on. Preach. Oh, can I tell this story? Sure, go ahead. Yeah. Tell Oh, no. Tell mm -hmm. We went to the Charity Girl concert. <laughs> I drove nine hours, y'all, to get there. Amen. And we are. Now, y'all know how loud I am, Lord. <laughs> y'all can laugh at that. And y'all know how loud Danielle is. Amen. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I don't have a voice. So I'm in the background pre uh, preaching. I'm in the background praying in the back with my baby. And I'm praying. And then I'm praying tongues some. But real light, like actually how I'm talking now. And Danielle is at like, you know, she's, she could be at Mach 10. <laughs> well, she was at like Mach 3. And I mean that, like with all respect. And I could have been at Mach 10. When you got me and Danielle at Mach 10, it, 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 it's a whole different ball game. Yeah, yeah, but then yeah. you got Naya with her sweet little voice, <laughs> singing, <laughs> then praying in tongues, right? And all of a sudden, this big burly dude <laughs> comes up behind me and Naya. I'm standing there with my child, Pastor Matt, and he starts singing, and he's got this loud voice over us, right? And we're singing this song, but we're singing this song about we are the body of Christ and we are one and you're my brother and you're my sister and we come to the table and we're all together and we're like, it's like a kumbaya moment. Like, it's like, yeah, you know what I mean? Like, everybody's feeling good. Like, we're happy. Like, we're ending this thing on a good note. We're like, we drove nine hours. The Lord is here. And this guy comes up <laughs> And he says, can I talk to you for a moment? You and you and your friend. <laughs> well, I didn't know Danielle already got rebuked <laughs> for speaking in tongues. Oh, okay. And I said, so, so wait, every place we go, look, for real, this is funny, but it's serious. Naya always gets told how great she is. <laughs> <laughs> so... So, so people are normally like, can I talk to you for a second? And when they say that, like a compliment normally follows. And they usually tell her, man, your voice is so beautiful. You're so anointed. And she is. The Lord has anointed her. Amen. And I welcome those comments to encourage her yes. in her gift, in her call. And... So I'm like, oh, here we go. <laughs> like, you know, I'm like, they're going to tell Naya how great she is. And he says, have y'all ever read your Bibles? <laughs> and my husband said, you should have said, between the three of you, y'all have more degrees than a thermometer. <laughs> I said, that was good, Jeff. You should have been there. <laughs> but I'm, I'm like rocking a baby, and I'm like, I don't understand what's going on. <laughs> And Danielle, since she was already rebuked and I didn't know it, says, I've read my Bible. And yes, I already know. It's a gift. It's a, and, he, and he goes on to tell us that tongues is only for the gift of speaking in tongues. Not, right? Not for corporate worship. Well, I'm looking at my child and looking at him and I'm saying, questioning, like, should I speak, not speak, speak, not speak. I want to be like Jesus. I just drove nine hours. This isn't what I came here for. So I begin to walk away. <laughs> I'm like, this ain't even worth my time. Yes. Amen. Because he wasn't moving in the spirit of truth. Right. That's right. And he wasn't wanting truth. That's right. And the enemy was coming in to rob from what was happening in the act, in the in the, in worship. Yeah, right. I mean, for real, the Lord was moving. Right. And this man was so bound <laughs> that he couldn't even really get in. Right. Even though he was singing over us, right. it was like a dominating hostile yeah, spirit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> because 
And I look, we, we said, we pray that man gets filled with the Holy Ghost driving yeah. home. He just, yeah, 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 yeah. he just, the Lord falls on him. He just starts speaking in tongues. Yeah. I said, how great would that be? Yeah. So anyway, we don't know what happened with him. But look, my, at first, I was just like, what just happened? <laughs> but because we don't understand truth, there's things sometimes we just don't understand. Right, right. But, but our job is to go investigate. That's yeah. right. Yeah. And sometimes we don't know everything. That's right. We don't know everything. Yeah. And sometimes we need to go back and say, God, if this is of you, then show me. Amen. Well, that man kept going, y'all. And Naya said, God bless, have a great day. <laughs> and he kept going. And Naya said, God bless, have a great day. He said, I'm going to go get the elder, elders and y'all are going to be disciplined. Yeah. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Disciplined. <laughs> yeah. Wow. This was not Jesus. Uh, and I said, disciplined. And I'm rocking my chop. <laughs> and I said, oh, my gosh. And I said, sir, God bless, have a great day. And I and I said, okay, Lord, this wasn't of you. Mm-hmm. And God, help that to never be us. Yes, yes. Jesus. Because, no, listen, yeah. y'all. Come on. As a church, yeah. we can be moving like that. Come on. Right. 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 And in his lack of understanding and ignorance, involuntarily, he was in bondage. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And he wanted to come to us and tell us. And then he walked out the door and told us we had demons. Yeah. Oh, wow. And I said, God bless him. <laughs> well, what I'm saying is, is because of our misinterpretation of the <clears throat> word of God, we can be bound into self-righteousness. That's yeah. right. And that, I mean, that was extreme. But like, we can live like that right here in this church. Come on. Come yeah. on. Yes, we can. And we could think we're something or we're nothing. And the Lord said that for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. But it is written that there's none righteous, no, not one. Not one of us are right with God. There, the Bible says they are all gone aside. They are all together become filthy. There is none that do good, no, not one. That's right. Wait a second. So that puts us all where? At an equal playing field. That's right. For we are all sheep, have gone astray. We have all staggered. We have all wandered. We have all been out of the way at some point in time. Right? We have all turned away to his own way. We've all been selfish at times, wanting things that God doesn't want for our life. Mm, yes. Right? Yes. And the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. God's redemption plan was always improving our spiritual condition. Come on, He always wanted to bring us up. He doesn't want to leave you where you're at. That's right. So if we find ourselves in involuntary bondage, we chose it. Or in involuntary bondage. We didn't understand it. Mm -hmm. So we went that way in ignorance. Mm -hmm. God wants to set us free no matter what. (laughs) I've been in both. I'm just going to say that. (laughs) I've chosen to walk out of whatever the Holy Spirit was telling me to. And found myself in a hole that I needed to help out of. And then I've also gone that way in ignorance. Mm -hmm. And not understood about something and then later on, be teachable. Mm, that's it. Don't shut your ears off. If you don't understand, look, sometimes there's things I didn't learn for like, the Lord would show me, and then like three years later, I would understand. So while you're in that one to three years, don't be chopping people up. Because <laughs> you don't understand. That's right. Say, God, just show me. Yes. God, show me. Because I want to walk in truth. I want to walk in deliverance. John 8, 35 says, the servant, of, the servant abideth not in the house forever, but the son abides forever. That's a scary verse, y'all. That says, the servant abideth not in the house forever. 
That means that which one has committed their way to the journey of going in the wrong direction doesn't abide in the house anymore. What does that tell me? That our salvation is not once saved, always saved. Come on, amen. That our, it says work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. If my disciples will continue in my word, right? We've got to continue to believe, continue to trust, continue to go in that direction. Because he said, if we do not abide in the vine, that we could be cut off and thrown into the lake of fire. That actually gives me a reverential fear about my progression and the process of God changing me. God, I want to be ready when you come back. I want to be ready when you return. That doesn't mean a state of perfectness. It means a state of your heart being perfected in him. Yes. Is he showing you things and you're receiving the spirit of truth and saying, I want to walk in the realm of faith and freedom. I want to walk in the truth that you're showing me, even if it pains me. Because I want to walk in freedom. Yes. So, I want to show you this quickly. Three examples where the Lord set people free. Remember, freedom from bondage, freedom of sin, freedom from demonic influence, freedom from disabling spirits that want to cause you to be inoperative, freedom from the spirit of infirmity, that means the condition of being fit, frail and feeble. Listen, there's going to be times that we're going to be weak. But he doesn't want to live you want Christians to live in a state of frailty. Try it. Strong in the Lord. I'm not saying strong in you. Mm. We might be sick in body. Yeah, yeah. We not, might not be able to move. But you can whack strong in your spirit. Yes. There's a difference. <laughs> He wants you to walk strong in faith. If the sun shall make you free, you shall be free indeed. Listen to this. The book of Exodus shows this. If you put Exodus 6.1 on the board, I want to talk about the freedom from bondage and the freedom from sin. <clears throat> One of the examples in that is the children of Israel. Then the Lord said to Moses... Now shall you see, hear me. He wants you to see your freedom. He wants you to behold it. He wants it to appear before your eyes. He wants it to be manifest to you. You will see what I will do. Who? God will do. Hallelujah. To Pharaoh, which is a type and shadow of the enemy. He said, you're going to see it, Micah. What I'm going to do to the enemy before you. Yes. Thank you, Lord. With a strong hand, he will let them go. Yes. And with a strong hand, shall he deliver them out of the land. That strong hand is an overcoming hand. That strong hand is an overpowering hand. He said, let my people go on Calvary. The blood of Jesus subdued the enemy yes. already for you. So he said, Moses, my man of God. Now, Moses was a mess too, y'all. I love the word of God because it shows that they're a mess. <laughs> and that they love Jesus and he cleaned them up. But you know, it said, the blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall what? See God. That doesn't mean that we're perfect in heart. That means that we're pure in our faith towards the Lord. And when we trust him, when we believe him, when we set our mind on him, when we set our hearts on him, he begins to manifest himself to you. He shows himself to you. And he said, Exodus 6-2, that God spoke unto Moses and said to him, I am the Lord. That word Lord means I'm a covenant-keeping God. 
I cut covenant on Calvary, and I'm going to keep my agreement. God made an agreement with Jesus that he was going to subdue the enemy under your feet. And that you are in Jesus, so now you are in covenant with God. You are in agreement with God. And he says, I'm going to keep my word. And I appeared, now check this out, y'all. I appeared unto Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob by the name, what did he appear to them by? The name of God Almighty. That means I am the all-sufficient one. Yes, yes. The amount of something that you need is enough for the... He's going to supply all of your needs. That's what that means. Yes. I'm the all-sufficient one. I'm enough for all that you need. Yes. But look at this, though. Me and Danielle were like, whoa, that's deep. But by the name Jehovah, that word Jehovah means God or existing one, Adonai or the Lord. He said, but by my name Jehovah... Lord, was I not known of them? So he knew, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob know, knew God as the one to supply all their needs. But he wasn't making, they weren't making him Lord of every area of their life. Come on. And we've seen that in their wandering in the wilderness. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I asked us. Yes. Have we gone to the Lord? The Lord, you supply all of our needs according to your riches and glory. That's a good one. We all know, right? God, you're going to do it. You're going to provide. But then he's saying, okay, you know me as the one that's going to provide for you. But do you know me as Lord? Come on. That's good. Are you letting me reign in those areas because I'm trying to set you free? Come on. So good. He said, Exodus 6, 4, I have also established my covenant with them to give them, through the blood of Jesus, the land of Canaan, the land of pilgrimage, wherein they are strangers. He's saying, I accomplished my covenant already in my blood, and that land I want to give you is freedom, deliverance, peace, joy, forgiveness, new life, grace healing. I've already established my covenant with you. Now you need to make me Lord so you can walk in that covenant with me. And I don't mean he is your savior. Don't just make him savior. Make him Lord. He wants to be Lord. He wants to reign over everything in your life. Over our mind, over our heart, over our emotional state. And he says, and I've also heard, listen, they're groaning. Have you ever groaned? <laughs> groaning from a deep place of pain and grief. <clears throat> he said, I have heard their groaning. Jesus was intently listening to your cry. And it says, whom the Egyptians keep in bondage. Satan, sin, this world, and self are all trying to wage war, to keep. That means retain possession and power. Mm. Hear what I'm saying? The enemy is trying to wage war, yes. to remain in possession and power. Yes. Over you. That's right. And I have remembered my covenant. Listen, Jesus wasn't up there. He didn't forget the children of Israel. But remember means he reminded them of what he was going to do. And Exodus 6 6 says this Wherefore I say unto the children of Israel, I am the Lord. I will bring you out from under the burdens of the Egyptians. I will rid you of all their bondage. I will redeem you with an outstretched arm and with great judgments. I will take you for my people. I will be your God. And you shall know that I am the Lord God who bringeth you out under the burdens of the Egyptians. I am the Lord. It is written it, it's already sealed. Listen to this. A covenant is an agreement 
or a promise usually under the seal between two parties. Jesus has told, sealed you with his spirit already to remind you of his covenant. Right, right. You are sealed with the spirit of promise to remind you of his word, to remind you of his covenant. He said, I will bring you out. That word bring you out means depressed, that you were under. That, that word depressed means prostrate out completely. Have you ever been so knocked down that you're like straight out prostate? Like, I can't even get up from this. Like, TKO, I'm out. Well, that was how heavy the weight of the burden of the Egyptians were. He said, I will bring you out from under that load. I will rid you, that means snatch away, deliver you from the state of being controlled by anything else but my spirit. You hear what I'm saying? Jesus is saying, I want to rid you from being controlled by anything else but my spirit. I will redeem you. I will take you for my people. I will be your God. And you shall know, properly see, that the Lord your God will bring you out from under the burdens of the Egyptians. So what does he want to do? Cause you to walk in freedom from the burdens of this world. Cause you to walk in freedom from the bondage of sin. Cause you to walk in freedom. He doesn't want you to live in that state of being any longer. He wants you to set you free and free indeed. And then you see it again. We see him set the children of Israel free in the Old Testament. I'm coming to a close. And Mark 5 says this, 5-1. Jesus shows up. What else did I say I wanted to talk about? You being set free from demonic possession as an unbeliever or influence as a believer. Demonic strongholds in our heart as a believer. Demonic influences on our heart and our mind as a believer. He wants to set us free from those things. And it says, they came over, Mark 5, 1, unto the sea, into the country of the Gadareans. I'm going to say this. Jesus isn't too small to come to you right where you're at right now. And Jesus doesn't just go to the Gadareans. He comes to Patterson. Yes. And he's saying, I want to set you free. And when he came, Jesus came out of the ship immediately. There met him a man out of the tombs with an unclean spirit. This man was demonically possessed by a demon. A demon took up residence in this man. But I want to say this. This symbolizes Jesus' mission to the world. That he is coming to set people free. From demonic possession, okay? But demonic influence. Yeah, yeah. And strongholds that he tries to get upon the church. Right, right. And Jesus had just got done still in storms. He was creator and he just got done still in storms. And he walks on to land and this man with an unclean spirit. Demons tremble in the presence of God. Yeah. 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 And the unclean spirit shows up and says, what do we have to do with you? That's right. Demons Demonic influences answer to the Lord. Yeah. <laughs> this man was in the tomb. Let me ask you this. Are we making our dwelling mm. in a tomb? Mm. Help us, Lord. Where we abide, where we remain. Are you remaining in that anger? Come on, preach. Are we remaining in that place of self-pity? Woe is me. Wow. Grief, so good. sorrow, pain. The tomb represents a place of darkness, death. And he was in there cutting himself. Mm. He, there was self-harm going on. Wow. Look, you can harm yourself without not like cutting yourself. That's right. You can even speak words of disgust over yourself. That's right. And, and that's just cutting. Come on. <laughs> you hear what I'm saying? And, and this man 
made his dwelling there. Mm. And I'm asking you as the body of Christ, where are we making our dwelling? Mm. Where are we at? And, and when the Lord showed up, I love this because even, wait, y'all, if the demon could run to the feet of Jesus, why are we not here? Yeah. Come on. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> Why why can't we come to the altar? Why can't we run to the feet of Jesus? Come on. If the demons tremble before him. And 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 the, the man knew he's gonna he can set me free. Why are we running? We should be running to the feet of Jesus. God, I need you to set me free from underneath this burden that I'm carrying. I need to put down the window and I need to throw it out the window, oh God. God, I need you to break down these walls. God, I need you to tear apart these chains. God, I need you to clothe me in my right mind. I had somebody text me the other day and said, I'm just not in my right mind, the client of mine. And I said, I said, please come to church. Because Jesus is the only one that can clothe you How in your I? right mind. Yes. Yes. The truth of God's word solidified in your heart can change your mind. Yes. Can change the way that you think about life. What Danny Danielle, what is my purpose in life? She asked her, what, what is it worth life worth living for? Jesus. That's that's somebody cutting themselves in the tooth. You get what I'm saying? And we as believers, we can we can live in that state. It said day and night he was doing it, Pastor Matt. Day and night he was crying out. It wasn't just here and there. It was torment day in and day out. And Jesus is on the move and comes to set him free. And he cried with a loud voice and said unto Jesus, What do I have to do with thee? For he said unto him, Come out of the man, thou unclean spirit. And the spirit had to obey. That spirit is under direct order and power, all power and dominion, all thrones and positions. His name is above them all. They must go in Jesus' name. Yes. Now, as a believer, those strongholds must come down in Jesus' name. Yes. That demonic influence upon our mind, day in and day out, must go in Jesus' yes. name. That crippling spirit that has kept you bound long enough has to go in Jesus' name. Yes. In, in your family, in your home, Hallelujah. in your children, yes. it has to go in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Why? Because the demons tremble before him. He wants to set us free indeed. Now, if you would come up. Yes. This last example Thanks. was a lady, says Luke 13, 11. And behold, there was a woman which had a spirit of infirmity 18 years and was bowed together and could in no wise lift herself up. Be, once again, that word behold in this instance meant you could outwardly see what was affecting this woman. Have you ever been around people and you just know? Yeah. Something's got them. And you could see it. Well, that spirit of infirmity was disabling this woman, making her limited in her movement, making her ineffective and inoperative, making her feeble and frail. Have you ever felt like that? I know I have. This woman was going through this for 18 years. Some of us might have came in here and said, I have been looking at this thing for so long. I've been looking at this bondage. I've been looking at this sin. I've been looking at this torment. I've been looking at this pain. I've been looking at this sorrow. I've been looking at this grief. It is kept to be bowed over. Have you ever 
you ever been in that position where you just you just can't get up? I just I can't get up from this thing. Well, that she was overcome on her own, completely overcome. But listen, when Jesus saw her, he called her to him, and that's what he's doing this morning. He's calling. He's calling. We heard it in the beginning song, and we're hearing it through the scripture now, that he called her to him and said unto her, Woman, man, be loosed of thy infirmity. Meaning, he seen her, he understood what she was facing, he cared about it enough not to leave her in it, called her. But when someone calls you, you gotta answer. Aaron could call my name and I could ignore him and just walk out the door. But Jesus is calling us to come because this is what the word of God says. It said he laid hands on her and immediately Straight away, she was made straight and glorified God. That word loosed means to relieve, to dismiss, and to free fully. Jesus wants to relieve you today. Have you ever felt like, I need just some relief? (laughs) I need relief from this situation. I need to be fully free. Jesus is saying, come. He wants to touch you. One touch from the master. And it says, what did she do? She glorified God. So if you would stand out with me this morning. Jesus is calling. He gave us three examples in the word of God where he set his Yeah.